Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. Recaps, reviews, Star oh, Trek. Yes. That's right. Yes, Star Trek Discovery. Yes, season five, episode five. And Brian, what's the title? Mirrors. That's right. Give him all <laughs> the Latin in the world. <laughs> Yes, it's mirrors, and that might be a clue. clue I had to look things. it up twice because I forgot it after years seeing it the first time. <laughs> Who's the fucked up one here? We'll never know. Right. <laughs> we'll never know. All right, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it is mirrors indeed. So uh, before yes. we get started, though, guys, yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Ding, 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 first ding. of all, talk to us. Tell us what you, what you want us to review, what you want to see here, etc. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. All that so, helps the algo, but the comments, most of all, kind of, kind of help us with it, with the channel more than anything, I think. Yes, it does. All right. Well, so we open up with Booker doing a personal log. And uh, let me see, he's looking over some details he has on the mall. And uh, I got to stop you right there. Already, already, this is a miss for me. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it made me remember how much I liked Zombie Picard and the Captain's Law. Yes. And captain's when law. other people would do it, it would be something special. But when the captain did it, it was part of the process. It was introducing yeah. you to what was going on on the ship on that day. Yep. No doubt. Yeah, it did feel like he was giving an old captain's log, didn't it? Kind of. But, yeah. you know, it was it was a Booker's log. It's like, okay. Yeah. Booker's Who cares log. about your log, your personal <laughs> right. log? Booker dropped a log. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So fuck, I, I get you. I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, so uh, we see that they're at L and M's. Oh, yeah, I got that L and M thing. That's uh, Lock and Mall, by the way. You know it's for the yeah last known coordinates. Uh, and he seems very anxious. Uh, we get the uh. That famous trailer shot you remember <laughs> that I talked about, where uh, Tilly looks pregnant, and actually, it's just—it's really bad for all the females in that shot. It just—it's horrible. The, well, I mean, it's not just bad for the females; it's just a bad shot in general, in my opinion. Yeah, well, yeah, it comes. It's weird. It's like they're yeah. all kind of flowing into the the bridge there. It's like, what are these people doing? They're not, you know, it's. It was weird. It was like synchronized <laughs> swimming or something. Like yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that those, those tunics just are not flattering. Some of them, some of them are having look like they're very well tailored, and maybe it's just because mm -hmm. they've got the body. I don't know. But uh, well, I don't know. I would say overall, like uh, when when comparing it with the Star Wars universe, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I had big problems with their set and uh, costume and makeup and a lot of their stuff, right? Right, yeah. Here, true. not so much. I do have some issues with some of their costume and, and other choices, but overall, everything feels okay. Uh, the the shoes, I could maybe, like, see something else done with, right? That was yeah. a little rough. And, of course, Tilly, not not very flattering, but whatever but yeah she's never very Maybe. flattering what what else are you gonna do coming off of the old jumpsuit theme right yeah it's funny because yeah well you forget how just nasty the jumpsuit was and then the, we've had that the episodes kind of taking us back and looking back at some of that stuff and it's like whoa cringe right <laughs> cringe i do i do kind of like this new uniform like if it fits burn very well rainers fits very damn well mm -hmm. i mean you know Stamets, there's, there's plenty of them. Yeah, yeah. But some of the females just got fucked. And it's not because they're like some of them are, uh, I want to say Detmer, maybe one of them. And she's got, she's fit. So, I mean, that it's just weird. I guess it's just a choice they made for certain tunics. Not all of them are cut that way. It's just certain ones. I feel crooked. You feel crooked. In frame. Well, you should. There's no telling how I feel. I don't know what you anyway. call it. Yeah. So Stamets and Tilly give everyone a briefing. They come up to the front of the class and give everyone a briefing. <clears throat> uh, 
about how they found out how to track Lock and Maul and uh, where they went into this wormhole, which it's sort of not a wormhole, really. Uh, They're kind of like the Wonder Twins in this episode, right? Yeah, they are. Their powers they, are always coming together. Yeah, and but usually it's Tal and him, too. But yeah, right. he, he's like pulled on the extra power of Tilly in this episode. So Tal's more like uh, Gleet the Monkey or whatever his name was. <laughs> Is that what was his name? Was I, I can't recall. Gleet or something like I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, he was the stupid monkey. Or, uh, Tal's the monkey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they but it's a small ish wormhole, so it's gonna take a small ship to get in there, like a shuttlecraft of some kind. Lock them all ship, apparently. <laughs> Had a little just, trouble getting in, right? Yeah. Well we we think, well, okay, so they must have got in, but then once they're, you know, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but once they are in there, yeah, they see this. Well, I mean, it was kind of a pointless sequence, right? Getting in. Oh yeah. my god, we've got to time it perfectly. Right. That I guess well, I guess that's setting up for, again, foreshadowing for later when it's really yeah. important, but it right. ended up not being that big of a deal, it didn't seem to me. But uh the uh burnham is saying who will be on the way team and surprise 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 it's uh her and booker off on their own in this shuttlecraft together and i really didn't like her delivery of like the mystery indeed shit like yeah I, I no, don't know it, if it was her delivery of the line itself or what and, well, and that's what i was that's the problem i have with this it is i'm not invested right yeah i don't care about these characters right i, I feel you completely this so when they deliver a line most often it's pretty flat when they're in danger the threat's not really that real to me right right yeah so, i don't know right. i think that's the main problem is they just don't don't know how to make us care about the characters i agree wholeheartedly um and this is just what this show though because yeah. I, I love uh strange new worlds man love Same. it um so of course we see a little concern in uh commander rayner's eyes as burnham gives him the con like you say it just feels it's a very weird deal like you say yeah. she's like i'm going with booker now <laughs> no <laughs> nobody noticed me and booker alone mind you <laughs> yeah it was really really weird i'll leave you uh, to it number one <laughs> <laughs> uh and when they're a little called a euphemism or something i was thinking oh no that's later yeah right um, yeah so they we move into the ready room where Rainer says the uh, mission is too dangerous for the captain. It's the old Riker to Picard. You know, you, know, you can't do this. This is this is for me to do. I must um, simply protest. Yeah, and Burnham kind of turns it around and on him and and asks Rainer what's what it's really about for him. And uh, he maintains he's just doing his job. Perhaps he's just a bit gushy, uh, uh, gun shy, gushy. <laughs> he's just a bit gun shy taking the con. For some reason it seems that way he he yeah. uh it's like since it's not his chair he doesn't really want to sit in it I, you see that um i think and, also the idea is supposed to be that he hasn't fully connected with the crew yet right like yeah no th there that's very uh, evident i think because uh he gets he gets back to his old self uh we'll see in a little bit um burnham sticks to her guns and tells him he has his orders so that's where that scene ends and um now we're in the shuttle with Book and Burnham, and Burnham asks about Maul, and they, you know, kind of a little moment, and she's trying to inquire more about, I guess, his relationship or his thoughts on her anyway, because she wants to know what he's, what his mind's at. What the end game is, basically. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yep. Yeah. And Book, Book admits that he thinks he can reach Maul, too, so we yeah. know going in that that's, that's his end game for sure. Uh, they get close to the aperture and have to scramble to figure out how to uh, get through it. Get get through it in time, right? Because it, yeah. it's opening and closing kind of real fast. Like, like it, it looks like a giant asshole to me, man. But, <laughs> well, I mean, I saying. was thinking like a shutter on a camera, but you know, it, it did have a similar same, feel. Yes, same idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, I sphincter really came to mind. It was more what came to mind. So asshole sphincter, whatever. I mean, you know, sphincter could be internal, not necessarily the asshole. Right. They did have a you did watch them. Yeah, that's right. Bless you, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Where am I at here? Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, they're time in the asshole. That's right. They got to get right in that asshole. Just right. Um, and they enter and it's a bit like any other wormhole, a bit of turbulence, just like we're used to and seeing in deep space nine. Uh, of course the writers took away all their sensors and comms. Right. So there's that device. Um, they see lock and all ship damaged, like, like Brian said earlier and surmise that the, uh, aperture must've caught them in the rear as they were passing through and they can send it, they continue on and they see another ship emerge and it's uh, ISS markings on it. And, uh, it's enterprise a mirror universe ship. And it's the fucking enterprise, man. Yeah, here it is. And I'm like, how did it get here? Burnham says yeah. it's got to be one hell of a story. Yeah. Tease. We'll, we'll get a, a one line or two line expl explanation, like maybe later. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like they're actually like, we're going to tell that story in Strange New Worlds. I feel like it's a tie in. It would be nice. Because it, I would like to see all of the interesting stuff that they haven't gotten to, like, with yeah. all that and pull that into Strange New Worlds. Yeah. I mean, like, First of all, I need to go on record. Can I go on record now? Yes. Um, I don't like Mirror Universe. I really don't. Uh, I, the classic stuff's okay. The 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 Deep Space Nine just ruined it, man. It's like all of a sudden now we got to have a Mirror Universe in every Star Trek show. We got to have a Mirror Universe episode. I don't know. I just didn't care for the Deep Space Nine's choice, how it went. It, it wasn't my favorite. I try and pass all those episodes every time I watch it. And I'm watching it right now. And we'll probably skip. I think we've already skipped one, actually. I think it's honestly because when it came to Deep Space Nine, there were certain formats of uh, episodes where you just could not get away from the soap opera aspect. <laughs> you, yeah. you felt what this actually was, you know? how the production was looked at. Yeah. Um, Lesbian Kira was weird too. Yeah. Or whatever um, she called herself. I've always let the Mary universe personally, just because it was more like a, you know, elsewhere or like I was saying with the, um, maybe you'll put a link up of there are supernatural video that, that we did the, yeah. the trickster episodes of those where right. it's kind of a shift up a change, you know, so something interesting and weird happening. Right. Yeah. And when yeah. you were when you were talking about those the other day, I was thinking about like how Batman, the classic Batman TV series, used to shoot everything sideways, yeah, like noir style or Dutch something. Angle. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel I really feel like they might tackle this story of how that ship got there in a Mirror Universe episode in Strange New World. So would we'll, cool. uh, we'll wait to see because it would be great. Uh, it would be a very nice little tie-in that it didn't feel forced yeah. because I bet a lot, it was missed on a lot of people. They're like, I mean, it, probably not. I mean, like you want to know the story. I did. I was like, Oh man, that is a good story. She says it. That's a good story. So to me, that's a little on the nose. That's like saying we've done, we're doing this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I don't know. I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So all this happens, right. When here we are, we go through the titles <clears throat> We return to a panning shot of the saucer section, and it is 1701. No bloody A, B, or C. A little, uh, little nod to the past there. Y'all know what that is. Uh, the question is, what era is it from? And that that is the question I had in my mind as we were watching this, as I was writing this, right? And I thought, um, well... Obviously, it's not A, B, or C, and all that shit. And there's only one Enterprise we're really kind of intimate with discovery-wise, and that's the Strange New World Enterprise. Correct. So yes. it just makes sense that it's the Mirror Universe version of that Enterprise. The only two tie-ins that we really had, right, uh, was Cho, a callback later on in the episode, and here, Saru. Yeah. If I recall correctly, there were no other members or anybody else mentioned being attached to this ship right yeah um so it's probably pike's counterpart like i'm saying that was right. that was part of it um the rest of uh lock and ship and burnham says 
uh, they see the rest of Lock and Maul's ship, and uh, Burnham says they must be desperate if they're still alive. So Book finds a place and docks the shuttlecraft. We jump back to Discovery, and Dr. Culber, when Tilly walks in, and uh, probably about to have some feel-good moment. I'm writing that now. I want to say that. I was writing this now. They're probably about to have a feel-good moment, so just to see if I'm right. I place. I hit the play button to see if I was right. And she tells the doctor she needs to get into an EPS panel right where he's at. She's uh, helping Stamets and Tao improve the comms situation because you know nobody comms. And uh, as Tilly's working, she's wittering on about the whole story of you know what she's been doing, this conduit she's tracking, all that bullshit. You know how she gets. And uh, it's interesting though because uh, Doctor Colva. Dr. Colber has a uh, glazed over look in his eyes and he just says, you know, I got a lot of work to do in my office. <laughs> right. And like, dude, Tilly's sappy sense, like, you know, is everything okay? You know, it's right in the moment. It's like, damn it. I knew you were going to pull us into something. You're going to try something. Uh, he tries to blow her off and, uh, When he's my, uh, when he's about to, Stamets comes over the comms, asking what you know what Tilly's status is, and the scene continues on, but it jumps into where Stamets and Tal's working. Right on the aperture, uh, immediately Stamets goes into savvy mode and tells Tal how it wasn't her fault that the time bug deal happened because she's like triple checking her work and shit, you know. Uh, She's really taking that one on the chin. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm ready to get past this scene as quickly as possible, obviously. Yeah, I think we're in agreement, right? I don't yeah. have anything to add. <laughs> no, there's nothing good here. Uh, what a surprise. Because Dilly, Dilly and Dr. Thing is going to come back to happen, man. Right, yeah. Um, So uh, Rainer comes in asking if they fixed the problem yet. There's, we're still with St uh, Stamets and Tao. And uh, it's clear that he's micromanaging everything they're doing. He just wants it. He, he's, he, you can tell this, this, this move of putting him in that chair for this episode has really kind of unsettled him a bit. Made right. him slightly out of kilter. Yeah. Um, I keep losing my fucking place. <laughs> well, basically, they talk about uh, boiling a, a cake or pie. What was it? Yeah, it was some weird deal about boiling a, a cake. cake. Is boiled. Yeah. yeah. And they, um, that's the second time they bring up like his particular people's like euphemisms. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of odd, but. It is because it's got to get. I mean, it's, it's odd because you, you use those to relate to get us to relate but we can't relate because we're not him you know it's weird yeah it's an odd place um but it's funny because rainer gets back into his old self saying he doesn't need to know how the cake is boiled right that's what he, brian's talking about so yeah. uh he wants short concise sentences again you know this is like hey, we were reminiscent of all the interviews he did uh stamet says we just need to find a way to keep the aperture open and rainer says well do it and I just love that, man, because both Tal and Stamets just absolutely look perplexed at each other. <laughs> Raider's like, no, nah, not that easy. I get it. Go on. More words. <laughs> I like that. He, he, he's just about, he, he, he's fine. Use more words if you need it. Just don't use too many. I love it. Yeah. It's funny don't as fuck. Don't get lost in the yeah. sauce. Uh, so uh, Tal and Stamets start rattling off different ideas and their negatives. When we see Rainer is having a hard time swallowing, it looks very uncomfortable. Again, this whole episode, he looks uncomfortable. Stamets quotes Rainer saying, you're not alone in this. And ultimately, and Rainer chooses. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, Rainer chooses to have them focus on comms yep. rather than the aperture. So back on the ISS Enterprise, Book and Burnham with phasers drawn enters the, enter the bridge. Uh, they start looking through the computers for info, and Book had a hack that got him into the backup logs. The, they find the crew abandoned ship. They see life signs and say the clue is in sick bay. The clue they're looking for, right, is in sick bay. So that's where they head off to sick bay. Burnham says the clue was being held in transporter stasis, and Book's uh, 
Booker says the science has had to have a reason for putting it there. And as they moving into this room they find bedding blankets clothes kids toys and burnham mentions that it's odd for a warship right yeah uh booker finds the crew's story like written on the plaque like the uh well it kind of looks like the comm commemoration plaque to me it's in a, but it's not on the bridge it should be on the bridge maybe i don't know what it was but uh <clears throat> it did look like a commemoration plaque yeah it did bridge. So it says the Terran High Chancellor was killed trying to make reforms, and this crew escaped. They mutinied, brought refugees with them who were trying to flee their universe for ours, and a Kelpian slave turned rebel leader helped them. And Action Saru strikes again in any universe, right? Yep. Uh, Burnham notes that... Uh, that must be why the escape pods and shuttles are all gone. They have to make that point, right? We got to make sure they have no way off. So as far as we know, no way off the fucking ship, right? Correct. Let's make sure we know that. Burnham grabs some locket, by the way, and they yeah, move. Just some random thing. Yeah. He grabs it and they move on uh, to sick bay, which is where I thought they were at first, but no, they're moving on. So uh, they both get to either side of the sick bay door and they open it to reveal there is more than one lock and mall in the room. So they got hollow doubles, which here is like another the, play on the mirrors. The spider verse. <laughs> Do what? It's like the end of uh, into the spider verse. Oh yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh, you believe man, that? that was a yeah. great movie. I really, I, I do need to see it, but it's another play on the whole mirrors thing too. Right. Right. Yeah. So that, that, that theme plays throughout, um, a firefight. Well, that theme, and yeah, we'll, also we'll the, get to uh, it. Okay. Yes, it's it's further on. We'll, we'll, we will get there, my brother. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. yeah, um, a firefight ensues, and Burnham takes out the hollow emitter. Burnham wants them to talk, of course, and Booker steps out. He's like, cover me. He steps yeah. out, and they try and talk to Maul. He's trying to reach out to her. We learned that Maul thinks the previous Cleveland Booker was a scumbag. Doesn't care for her old pop at all. Um, so Lock and Maul try and bargain, thinking they have the clue. But Burnham starts getting cocky and tells them they don't have it and pulls that locket out that she picked up, kind of dangling it out there. Hey, James, lock it. And uh, there's more tense back and forth. And Maul says, <clears throat> can the Federation erase an Aragon? And Locke is like, shut up, quit, don't say nothing. <laughs> and Burnham's like putting two and two together real quick and realizes that Locke is a fucking brain, dude. Holy shit. Holy shit. We finally get to see. I was saying the other day I, I was hoping the brain would get more or less fringe that they were. But now we like find out that we're seeing a brain unmasked. That's a big revelation, dude, because like yeah. the brain's in deep space nine they always uh, i remember an episode where uh uh dax and warp were together and they were speculating or maybe it was dax and uh kira but they were speculating that they were furry or she said something about i heard they were fur all fur underneath that so this goes totally against that they're smooth i didn't get like um, well, I mean, nobody knew though, right? That was kind of the whole thing leading up to this, and that's one of the things that kind of ticks me off about the, some of the ideas that Discovery is getting. This is one of them. The mirror universe is another. Yeah, it's like the the threads that they're picking up are really cool things, and they I, I feel like they're just not. It would be interesting to see them more developed, maybe. Right. Yeah, it feels like they're just kind of like thrown down and like little bread comes to the to the end of the series. I know what you mean. Yeah, like holding your hand. It's like a Spielberg yeah. thing. Um, so we yeah, Bur uh, Araga is a right. bounty. Yeah, Burnham says the Araga is a brain blood bounty, mm -hmm. and. The Breen are after Locke and Maul, and that's why they're here, to find the progenitor's tech and give it to the Breen for their freedom. And uh, Booker asks what Maul did, and we flash back in time. Flashback, 
Flash back. They didn't do no wavy lines or anything, man. These wavy <laughs> lines and shit. All right. We come to a scene with a massive ship, and it's a massive hangar bay, and we see a younger mall talking, taking no BS from the Breen, man. She's just running her mouth, blah, 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 blah. Uh, when a third Breen walks up, and it's Locke. Uh, with this helmet on, by the way, we don't, we can't really yeah, see. Yeah, we don't know lock. this at this point. Yeah, but if you uh, have subtitles on, it's already telling you Locke is yeah. speaking under that helmet. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot with subtitles. There. <laughs> it's kind of handy sometimes, really. It can be. Yeah, it it, does, uh, it has helped me in a couple of things where like a mystery character comes on the screen and they kind of like reveal who it is, and then like later on, I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally that totally. person. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, dude, we all, everything is subtitled in our house, like always. It's just something my wife needed, and I can't do without now. I just fucking like it there. You know, people blame millennials, but the real reason is Dolby Atmos. Yeah. Yeah. It's everybody's uh, mixing all of their movies and, and TV shows and everything, like even TV shows, which is kind of stupid, right. for the Dolby Atmos system. Which nobody uh, has. Well, yeah, not true. Uh, but... Once it gets down muxed, everything but the dialogue gets blown out, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's a whisper. Yeah, it, right. it does suck. If, unless you've got the right system, you're, you're missing out. Um. So, yeah, my lock uh, walks up and uh, he tells her to be silent. He wants to inspect her cargo, but she doesn't. And they end up in a little pushy pushy and he backhands Maul. They keep fighting a little bit. She's almost seems like she's flirting with him, becoming right. play fighting. Uh, and you can see that he's kind of intrigued with it too by his body language, the way he's moving, you know, with her when she's kind of hitting on him and stuff. So Maul says uh, she knows Breen symbols, and the one he's wearing denotes royalty. And she had heard there's a nephew of the Primarch that doesn't fit the mold around here and has been demoted to shuttle duty. So she keeps trying to talk him into joining her, and he doesn't say no. Say no. Right. He we says, come... I should kill you for you know, just the suggestion or whatever. That's right. He does, yeah. And uh, she does it back to him. It's like, well, you're, you haven't, so why not? There you go. So we come back to regular time, and we still don't know exactly what they did. But Burnham notes the love is a powerful thing. Uh, she makes a whole speech about letting their love take them down the wrong road. It's about making choices, and uh, this is what Which Brian was, was going the through. The other big thing yes. about the episode I'm trying to say. Was, it was present in the very beginning in the captain's log, but yeah, here as well. Yep. There's mirrors running all through this episode. I, I liked that, actually. I thought it was nice the way they thread this in there, man. That's clever writing. I didn't hate this episode. I'll say that right now. Um uh, Booker says, you always have choices, and Maul agrees. Burnham realizes they're about to blow it up. They got this little, you know, something. Well, they got the, <laughs> he's got the clue in his hand the whole time, and she's like eyeballing it and worried that yeah. something's going to happen to it. And more gunfire ensues. Uh, Burnham and Locke get stuck in kind of like separate parts of this med bay, stuck in uh, containment fields, force fields. And the only way to deact them deactivate them is from the bridge <clears throat> excuse me. um so booker uses this as an opportunity to get alone time with Maul and asks her to join him in the quest to go to the bridge and free Conkle. their confederates <laughs> saying they both want the same thing right just like brian said common goal to get them out so uh, after a break in Act 1, we get to Act 2. Uh, we're in a flashback again with Lock and Maul on the brain ship. And this is a different time when they've been working together for a bit. You can see that her hair is a little longer. Clearly much closer. Maul says Lock has made her a promise to show her something, but still hasn't yet, and is very persistent about it. She wants to see what he looks like under the helmet. And uh, he hits that eject button, and... He looks wild, man. He looks like he's got plastic wrap covering his whole head with that yellow, uh, glowy green shit that they put in glow sticks underneath. Right. I didn't get I that. Mean, it's hard dude. to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't understand what was going on there because later on we see him. He's slick like he is now. Right. 
So it was weird. Well, uh, apparently they have two faces, right? That oh. that one and the other one. Yeah, true. Mirrors again, man. Yep. Uh, back in the present. And changes. That's it. Teams. <laughs> Yeah, back in the present on Enterprise, Ma and Booker are headed to the bridge. Ma points out that uh, once the force fields are down, that the truce is over. And Booker continues to get to her, but we hear what happened, that she hates her dad so much. Finally, we get to, we get to hear it. Basically, he's a dead dad, right? Yeah, well, that's, what, that's the way she sees it, for sure, because he left her high and dry, her and her mom. Uh, meanwhile, back in sick bay, Burnham is trying to get to lock. Just, I mean, it's like one set's doing it, the other set's doing it. Like you know, uh, Booker is trying to get to Mall. Burnham's trying to get to lock. So she asks if Lock trusts the Breen more than he trusts the Federation, and that gets him thinking hard. And we already know Lock is uh, easier to get to because he wants to keep her alive and the, them together. Uh, Am I said, alone in thinking that he's kind of been, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the actor has been kind of channeling a little bit of Nathan Fillion in this role? Maybe that's, I, I it seemed like Sometimes I had that the thought The way today. he speaks, the cadence, yeah, uh, the timber, everything, it, it's a little bit Nathan Fillion for me. I don't know. I, I think I might be with you on that one. I swear I have, might have had that thought today. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, I can see that for sure. They have worked together, so have they? Well, that would be, uh, yeah, definitely. And we've already seen in the past episodes, he's had his doubts talking about, you know, one episode the walls, I can feel the walls closing in around us. So he's definitely going to be easier to get to than Maul is. Uh, we get to another flashback, and it's the moment where Maul tells Locke she's got the uh, Emerald Chain contract and sh and she's leaving, she's out of there. He tries to talk her to stay, more money, whatever. It turns out all Ma wanted was to get to his uh, planet and get to that planet in the Game of Quadrant that Booker and her were talking about previously. Uh, Basically like Ryza. Yeah, her dad used to talk about it and uh, that he was taking her and her mother there. And uh, of course, he left them and they never made it there. And it's basically in her mind, uh, it's paradise, like Brian says, like Ryza is paradise. Um, as they're talking, three Breen walk up and Lox says it's his uncle, the Primarch, and Maul looks very uneasy. We jump back to the Enterprise and Maul loses patience and creates a power surge. We get a big bada boom and Lock and Burnham are freed. They stand off and the ship has a massive jolt and they both get thrown around and Burnham eyes the, uh, the clue in his hand and, uh, they start fighting. So back on the bridge, they find out they're uh, diving towards the aperture. Mm -hmm. And you see the shuttle <laughs> going towards it, too. It got cut loose. So they're not going out that way. Right. Uh, their only way out of there was that shuttle, as far as we know, right? Eight minutes till impact, they say, to figure a way out. And uh, Maul tries to make Booker stay on the bridge and says she and Locke will figure uh, something out themselves. Yeah. Booker tells her, hells no. And uh, he says why he's doing what he's doing. Tells, he tells her why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, she's basically his only family. Yeah. Uh, she drops her phasers and says, let's go. Come on, kid. I guess you got me there. Uh, the fight continues in sick bay. Burnham now has to uh, do with Locke what Booker did with Maul. Ultimately, she gets the clue, which was the real clue all along. It wasn't that Locket thing. Uh, yeah. And uh, we see that Locke has gotten impaled. By the time Booker and Maul walk in and see Locke, uh, see Locke asking what Burnham did to him. You know, uh, Maul comes in asking, what'd you do to him? Yeah. Thinking Burnham like just fucking skewered him or something <laughs> deliberately. And, and Locke kind of corrects her, but it doesn't seem like he's really interested in correcting her, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just kind of like she didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Booker informs uh, Burnham about their predicament, and Booker and Burnham leave Lock and Maul in Sigbay to find a way to pilot the Enterprise through the aperture. 
We go to another flashback, and the Breen are beating on Maul. Locke's uncle dressing dresses him down and uh, tells Locke he has to kill Maul. Locke chooses to shoot the guards, and uh, his uncle says, Uraga, and Locke shoots says, him I in know. the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he says, I know. Like, And then they flee. So that's how we know now what the old Uraga is all about. Um, Luke and Burnham are on the bridge trying to make something work. And then back on Discovery, still no comms, but they see a tractor beam coming through the aperture. And Rainer figures out that they need to make the aperture bigger for Burnham and Book to return. Uh, Rainer Dude, gets so weird. I thought maybe it was like uh, they were doing like a Morse code thing, but they didn't really... Well, they did. They they sent through 1214, I think it was, something yeah. like that. Yeah, and it was a reference to right. This yeah, it was thing even worse than Morse code. I think you may have in your notes later, right? Um, I know, probably not. Oh, I know okay. what yeah, I may not talk about it because I was just like, uh, whatever. Battle of Krill was it? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some kind of callback to that that Raider would know because he's an old military head, right? Yeah. Um. And Rainer gets the whole bridge involved in this massive brainstorming session. Uh, in the end, Rainer asks a question, and Stamet says, it doesn't matter. It'll work. And that's fucking hilarious, dude. Because yeah. he's like, we don't need any, we don't need an explanation. It'll fucking work. I promise. <laughs> it's perfect. So everyone gets citrus smashed, because that's what Rainer promised to whoever... You know, comes had up the, with a solution. Yeah, the winning solution. And so everyone got citrus smashed because they all fucking brainstormed together. And back on Enterprise, Burnham takes the time to have, uh, have a little moment with Booker because, you know, it's like we're going to die, possibly. Yeah. And even Booker's like, dull. <laughs> right. <laughs> dull. <laughs> with Discovery fires as torpedoes <clears throat> and connects with the Enterprise tractor beam. All right, they create this little fucking extra energy through the antimatter. Yeah, yeah it's a whole thing. Uh, they start pulling on the tractor beam, and they only have twenty seconds left. They did and note though that, however, once this aperture is closed or, or open this way, yeah. it's going to close, and that'll be it. It's gone. It's forever. over, baby. Yeah, that's it. It's over and done with. <clears throat> Uh, so shit starts blowing up everywhere around them. Of course, they uh, make it out, and the aperture is closed forever, just like Brian said. We get another new starship in the fleet, right? There's a fucking brand new, ISS brand new old Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. yeah. Just needs a little fucking <laughs> spit and polish, man. Spit and polish. Uh, so uh, lock them all. <laughs> uh Log them all managed to flee and warp out using a Karen warp pod. Yeah. I'm calling BS on this motherfucker. I agree. <laughs> Jesus. I Where supposedly... was that warp pod earlier? <laughs> yeah, right? Nobody knew about this fucking warp pod. Supposedly it's a life support system of some kind. You know, what the fuck ever. So they fired it out of the torpedo bay. But then I saw this fucking thing leaving. I'm like, that fucking fit in the torpedo bay? Right. It looked like, it looked like, a, like a little shuttle. Almost like a two seater, yeah. like a side by side or something. I don't know, man. Yeah, heavy bullshit call. That's that's really the only bullshit I had to call in this episode. I did like this episode. Even I don't know. That's why I had to make the point about how I don't like mirror universes. By the yeah. way, because I do like this episode. I don't know. Sometimes I think uh, some people aren't uh, necessarily. I don't know that we've seen them in this or any of the new uh, stuff. But as far as the torpedo bays are concerned. We have seen them in the past. We know that they're similar to submarine size, right? Um, but maybe whoever is writing this doesn't know that. And, you know, wait, wait, submarine size? Larger, you talking about yeah. for like uh, TNG? I mean, no, it's more like a, it's the size of a person. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that's what, what it's like in a like submarine. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, but I'm saying like a person laying down. Yeah, uh, almost so slightly like larger, but maybe the person running this doesn't know that. And yeah, they're absolutely, much dude. There, they, I mean, well, there's so much heavy bullshit called on this that I can accept all forms of uh, complaint for yeah. sure. 
Uh, so Burnham and War- uh, Rainer are walking and talking, recapping. Uh, we find Detmer and Osh- uh, Awasha Khan get to lead the team to bring back the Enterprise, which is kind of like a little honor, you know. Yeah. Sounds fun, actually. And Burnham smiles and uh, smiles at Rainer like a proud parent, doesn't she? She gives that. Yep. It's my kid. Didn't burn the house down. Yep. So uh, we end in Red's bar. And, you know, I learned that. I meant to bring that up because we were talking about there. And the, it's not 10 Ford. It's Red. Red's the Ferengi. That's his name. And it's his bar. I don't you know what the deal is. But so we end there. And Linus is playing the piano. And the doctor and Tilly are finally together for this fucking moment. I just knew I didn't want to see. And the doctor is just basically freaked out, man, of uh, everything that's happened to him. And um, it's a scene. He's entitled, right? Yeah. I think most of the people in the show are to be a little freaked out. That been yeah. Heavy and stuff. he doesn't realize it's spirituality that he's that he's freaked out about. Like, he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, because Tilly kind of guides him there, really. Um, yeah. But this, well, this is the... talking about his feelings and this yeah. larger than life stuff and then like you know where logic fails and she she has to point it out to him she's like well you're talking about spirituality dude so absolutely and this is the kind of thing that i talked about can be absolutely completely cut out of the show it yeah. wouldn't hurt it one bit only could benefit it yeah uh, i mean i think their idea is that this is supposed to you know kind of, kind of give you an inner glimpse into these characters and their worlds and whatever but i mean like yeah, it, I don't care it, that much. It falls on the wrong side of show don't tell, right? When right. You're telling, we've been shown all this already. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, they forget who their fan base is, don't they? Right. Yeah. Jesus Christ. We can be some pedantic motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, we move to Burnham's ready room where Booker enters and uh, they look at the vial. There's a little vial in the clue. And, uh, then they add the little piece to the map, and they reckon these scientists were placing these clues strategic, strategically right. around to teach a lesson, basically. Like, there's something to be said for each place they went to. There's a little moral threaded through each of the, I don't That's know. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to learn a lesson, and you have to be worthy, right? So, yeah. um, they had hope, and they found freedom despite impossible odds. Maybe we can shape our own futures, too. Right. That was the quote. Uh, In the end, we see the ISS Enterprise riding off in the sunset, and uh, they recognize how great they both were, because Burnham turns to Booker, and they kind of recognize how great they were. Stamets calls them to bring the vial down, and we pan onto the map, into a tight shot of the map, and scene. That's the end. And uh, a note at the end, it said, uh, in memory of our friend, Alan, Red, Red, Marci- Marcita. I don't want to fuck his yeah. name up. It's Marcita. Uh, and I wonder, I mean, I guess, is it the actor who played Red? Is he passed? I don't know. It's the only thing I can gather from it, unless there's another, you know, a ginger dude named Red that's in the production. I mean, it could be anything. I, oftentimes, I'll, I'll see this and, you know, you Usually in the past, past I would recognize like Absolutely. You know, who the person was. Maybe they yes. were like a DP or, or somebody attached to it. Um, now I have no like, idea. Uh, yeah, I, as of recent, I, I don't know if it's just too much to keep up with, or you know, there's just too many tendrils out there. Yeah. No, I agree. It was it was weird, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a character that very rarely seen. I wish. As much as I love the Ferengi on Deep Space Nine, I would have loved to have seen something involving him more. He could have been more of like a Guinan type character. I'm fucking doing the air bunnies like crazy today. <laughs> no more air bunnies. This well, is I an mean, air. I, don't know. Uh, I, I would like to see uh, more uh, Ferengi just simply because every time, every time you get introduced to uh, a Ferengi. It's a chance to establish a new baseline in the culture, you know, like new characteristics in in general, just because, you know, they're all portrayed in this particular way. And yeah. a lot of them are portrayed that way in the show. But, you know, there are little little things like in DS9 uh, that revealed Quark being maybe a little bit more than just a, a purveyor, right? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and things like that. Uh, it, it was in uh, TNG as well. Yeah, so, there was more than meets the eye. And th- yeah. this is so far in the future, too. We really kind of need an update. Like, what yeah, is exactly. Ferengi like now? Because we, it's a beloved character for us, and you guys are just barely scratching the surface with, okay, Ferengi still tends bar somewhere in the universe. Okay, that's cool. Right. Great. Well, let's find out more about the dude. Let's find well, out well, more about the culture. Again, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? It's a different world. I mean, like, they, they went through that whole fucking bad time, that whole temporal war thing and shit. Mm-hmm. It's a different world. Vulcan's not even called Vulcan anymore and shit. Right. I mean, dude, what do you do? But anyway, I know what you can do. You guys can stay tuned, right? Because next coming couple days, we're going to have the podcast coming to you. And then, of course... uh We'll have episode six of this reaction series coming around in another week. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And as always, as y'all are waiting for that to come around, just remember to be excellent to each other. And you know that Brian and I will always see you on the flip side. That's right. Peace out, y'all. Thank you.